Father, in the name of Jesus. King of kings, Lord of Lords, we want to say thank you, Almighty Father, for life you have given unto us. That is why we are here today. Jehovah Lord, you have protected us from the works of the devil. You have kept us in and happy. You have called us into salvation. King of kings, Lord of Lords, we say thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who sent to die for us. This is the reason we have gathered here today. To give glory to your holy name for what you have been doing. Father, Lord God, we pray you accept our thanks and praises in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, my Lord God, we pray that, oh my Father, even as we begin the service, you have one word for us in the mighty name of Jesus. We call upon the Holy Spirit to take charge. By your power, take away every vain imagination in the name of Jesus. Every philosophy that does not agree with you, we condemn in this service in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, we call for every focus. The focus that we need to hear from the Holy Spirit. Give unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for every minister, Almighty Father, that your word will flow through them. They will minister in spirit and not in flesh in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover everything with the blood of Jesus. We cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. And we open this service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Father, we thank you today. Lord, we give you all the praise and glory, honor and adoration. Indeed, Lord, you are great. And we are privileged to call you our Heavenly Father. Lord, today we remember all the fathers all over the world. And Lord, we know that you are our main father. And Lord, we know that the fathers here on earth, they represent you. Because that is the way you have designed it, O Lord. Father, we thank you for your great grace towards our fathers, our husbands, and for all the fathers to be. Daddy, when your word comes forth today, we pray, Lord, that many lives will be changed in Jesus' name. That we will all learn from it, Lord. That your word today does not only go out to fathers, but also as husbands, but also as wives and mothers. Father Lord, I give myself to you, that I will not speak my own words, but Holy Spirit, that you speak through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. It is good to be in the house of God, and um, we are privileged that more of the choir members were here today. We truly miss you all, and uh, we can notice every week a difference because the singing was powerful again, and we praise God for that. We are thanking God that slowly we are coming out of this uh, uh, this time of um, pandemic. So, brothers and sisters, this morning I would like to talk mainly to our brothers as it is Father's Day. But don't worry, sisters, you will get your portion. But a husband and a father, or a husband or a father, or both, in the presence of God, what does it mean? Because the theme for us this month is in His presence. And um, what does that mean? As a husband, as a father, to be in the presence of the Almighty. Well, first of all, I assume that all of you who are watching, and for those who are present here, men, that you have decided to follow Christ. Because if you have not made that decision, then all what I'm going to say today could be in vain. So it's important that you have made a decision to follow Christ. And I'm glad that you have done that. Now, first of all, I would like to say something how God sees a family. Because when we're talking about a husband, when we talk about a father, of course there must be a, a, a wife, and there must be a mother, and there must be... family, we see that God sees the family as a place of security, a place where you can find rest and also where you can find identity. The Christian home is a blessed spiritual heaven if it functions well in this midst of this sinful world. So you are actually like a little kingdom in this huge world. And the blessedness of God's confidence is experienced in the most wonderful way when a husband and a wife live together and perhaps with their children in the communion with God. Now we see right from the beginning that a Christian home is a creation of God. He established it in his divine wisdom right from the beginning. So it was not invented by man, it was God that created it. And we also see that God created the Christian family uh, as a central place in his creation. And that's why 
today and of all ages, we see that Satan so much want to harm our families and want to destroy our marriages. That even so much that even today, you know, we see Christians going into divorce. But we have failed to understand the importance of the Christian home. Because when a husband and wife, they come together, you know, there is like, as I said, a safe haven, a security. And when that is strong, no one, not even Satan, can destroy it. But today we are more focused on how we feel and our emotions than thinking about the call that God has for your family. Because of course we need to be happy and of course we need to you know, feel comfortable in the marriage. But we are more focused on what I can achieve from that marriage than looking at the calling as a whole. So for every Christian family, God has a special calling. And all of us are playing a part in it. So God has a higher purpose. Not only he has a personal plan for you, but he also has a plan for your family, for your household. And in that plan, he wants us to become more mature and rise up for any difficulty. So, most of the time when we marry and children are coming forth from it, it is our duty to look at them as people that God has created with is with their own plan and their own purpose. So together you are forming a team who, who all are, are called in this world to do the work of the Lord. Now we also see that when a Christian home is functioning, and I'm not saying perfect because we are not perfect, and God does not expect that from us. But when we are aiming and when we are trying to be in the presence of the Lord, we also see how much He is showering us with blessings as an encouragement. Amen. So, brethren, that's why today I also want to tell you that all those who are not married yet, it is very, very important that you find a partner that is a Christian, that is a real born-again Christian. You know, we are making the mistake that we think that we can change somebody, that when you will keep being strong in the faith, that that person will change. Well, you don't know, because everybody has their own will and their own decision. But when we are Christians, as I said, we have a part to play in this world. And when we are not with our equal partner, let me say, in crime, then it's going to be very hard. So if your husband or your wife, you know, will say, well, I will allow you to go to church or allow you to do things, it will not be the same as that when husband or wife are both God-fearing creatures. And also we need to understand that God has given us a great responsibility because as husband and wife, we need to live in the presence of the Lord all the time. And for the men, they have even a harder task than we as women. Amen. So husbands, we, we are looking out for you today. And that's why I want to talk a little bit about some of these responsibilities 
that you are having, and which I know, and which our I know our sisters know that it is not easy. God has not given you an easy task. So, how does a Christian husband, a Christian father, lead their family well in Christ? I'm not talking outside the Christian home. I'm talking inside the Christian home. Well, first of all, there's a scripture I would like us to read in Ephesians 5, verse 23. Ephesians 5, verse 23. Many of us know Ephesians 5 very well, you know, because it talks about husband and wife and how we should live with one another. But today we will look at some of the verses. Ephesians 5, verse 23, and it says, For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. I want to talk a little bit about leading, man, you are to lead. A Christian husband, a Christian man is to bring leadership to his home and his family. As Jesus is leading the church, so are men to lead their families. There is no discussion about it. Men are to lead their families. But when we look at Jesus, we see that his leadership was not self-centered. It was not about him. We never see Jesus saying, look at me, look at all the responsibilities I'm carrying for the church. We don't hear Jesus complaining. What does it involve, this great leadership? It involves strength that you need men from the Lord. It also needs sacrifice. You need to sacrifice men. Also in the service of the Lord. Now we see, as, we, as I said, that God has created a kind of order in the home. As right from the creation, He orders a kind of model. And these things, they don't change. Whatever God says, it will stand. Amen? So we see that God created a certain order for the family. An order of authority and obedience. And it is his purpose that that order will be maintained. Ouch. But let me tell you that this is for the welfare of our families. And I'm sure of the blessing that God gives for our home. Now in creation, God made the man the head. And headship implies, first of all, authority. The man has the final say. It doesn't mean that he should do everything without the wife. Because he needs the wife. Because we as women, we are, let's say, counselors. We can counsel him. We can say, this is my advice. But, by the end of the day, when hard decisions need to be taken, he is the one that takes the decision. And we see also that God has not only given him that, but also the full authority over a wife and over the children. Now, you will not see it from the outside. They look very confident. We read in Genesis 3, 9 to 19, we see there Adam and Eve after the fall. It is God that held Adam accountable. Even though it was Eve that says, Here, the very best fruit, take it. And he took it and he ate from it. It was still Adam where God says, Adam, what did you do? So, very, very important to live. A life together 
you know, that does not go against the word of God, even though it is difficult sometimes. So leadership in the home, brothers, means in the first place that you recognize and acknowledge that all authority is coming from the Lord. As Christ is the head of the church, men who are under Christ and your authority that has been given to you is not your own right. As man in the house, as a leader in the house, you are also a servant of the Lord. And so that means you cannot rule your household according to your own thinking and your own understanding. You have no authority than which God has given you. So the decisions that you are taking man means it has to be whatever God has told you to do. Don't go outside the authority of the Lord. So leadership, when we are leading, involves accepting the responsibility man for the whole family unit. And as brothers, I want to tell you and encourage you that when you struggle with being a leader in the home, look for a mentor who can guide you and help you. Because it doesn't mean that now you are the, you are now the husband or you are the father in the house that you have to take all these things on your own. No, you pray, but also it's good when you have a mentor where you can discuss things with. The second thing that our husbands and fathers should do is pursue holiness. They should pursue holiness. And you know, this is actually the key leading our families in Christ. And that's why when I said that when you are looking for a partner, women, don't look for an unbeliever because your leader over you is somebody that is responsibility for the well-being of you spiritually and physically now if somebody's head is not spiritually minded you will have a problem amen so even Paul was telling Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, 16, keep a close watch on your life and doctrine. Keep a close watch over your life and doctrine because the man in the house is also the pastor of the house. So spiritually, he is also responsible for the wife and the children. So, if holiness is found lacking in your lives, then it will be normal that the other members in your house are lacking as well. And when you as a man grow more and more as a spiritual leader in the house, your members in the house will grow too because you are setting the example. Number three, brothers, know what you can control and what you cannot control. I know there are many things going on in your house and there are some things that you can control and there are some things you cannot control. So how do you now handle the things you cannot control? Well, first of all, I want to say that we have to seek, you have to seek the face of the Lord. Because it is very important to surrender yourself to Him. Because it's only God that can change certain situations in your home. Because if one of the members in your home 
does not want to understand the direction you are going as a leader, that person also needs wisdom and understanding and faith. So, you as a leader in the home, you need to encourage, you need to exhort and teach your wife and your children in the faith that you are having. But you cannot control their embrace of growing in that faith. So, whenever you are, let's say, you are heading more forward than your wife, you need to pray and you need to do everything that is possible to get her on the same level with you. And husbands and fathers, serve your family well. Don't, you know, try to control certain things in your life. Things like anger, like selfishness, things like pride but also your tongue. Every word that we speak from our mouth has a consequence. Don't think that whatever you say or the way you say it, you just say that this is my right to say. It has a consequence. And as I said, don't forget to pray, man, about the things that are beyond your control. You can go the help of the Most High God. Number four is practice humility. Practice humility. Leading in Christ is different than what the world views of leadership. The way the world is looking at leadership is not the way God is looking at leadership. Amen. Because the world promotes a type of leadership that demands that to be served. They think that when you are the manager or when you are in control, they need to be served. Amen? But the Christian view of leadership demands to serve. God calls us servants. And we know that Christ is calling the man a servant. So dear Christian husband and father, you are the chief servant in your house. Congratulations. Because it's a great title, amen, to be a servant of Christ. So, Matthew 20, verse 26, Matthew 20, verse 26 says, whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And we lead by serving and often that serving is sacrificial. Number five, persist in joy and thanksgiving. In joy and thanksgiving, brethren. Persist in it. Set the tone in your house. Set the tone in your house. As a husband, as a father, you are responsible for that atmosphere in your house. It's you that creates together with your wife the culture in your house. And whatever, whatever the children are doing, if you have a teenager that is moody all the time or a toddler that doesn't want to listen, it is still your responsibility to make sure that the atmosphere is good. You know, I tell our sisters often that you are the fountain in the house. We know fountains, eh? This is water. Now, when a fountain is, is sparkling, it is wonderful. But when, the, when they switch off the fountain, it's like everybody switched off in the house. And the same goes for you men. We understand that you are busy working, you have a lot of things to think about, you have a lot of responsibilities. And sometimes you come at home and you're already in the mood of, I don't want to talk to anybody, let not anybody ask me anything. 
cannot even answer somebody normally because you feel that it is your right to be in this mood. No, you are not. You are not. Because as Christian husbands and fathers, you too are a fountain of life. And I know we cannot only be sparkling stars, but that is not what God has asked us to do. But when you come home and every day your children are already aware that, ooh, we shouldn't go and see that because we don't even know which mood he is in, it's a very bad thing. Our children should come and greet you in joy, knowing that their father is home. As a wife, you shouldn't have to look at the face of your husband to see what kind of mood he is in, if his work was successful or not. Because when you, as a husband, enter the house, you know you have entered your safe haven. So, brethren, man and husband pursue joy in the Lord and persist in thanksgiving because he will give you good gifts, as James 1, 17 is saying. And I will tell you that when you take that decision, that no matter what happens in the day, it will not shake you or shake you in your mood. Amen. Number six, be elusive in love. Be elusive in love. A Christian man is to nurture love for his wife and family as Jesus Christ does continually for his church so men are to love their families it does not matter what any family member does no matter how bad love is able to hold everybody together there is a principle in Ephesians 5, 1 to 2. Ephesians 5, 1 to 2. There's a principle there that says, be imitators of God. Or be ambassadors of God. Imitators, ambassadors. What Christ is doing, you should be doing. You should look at Christ because you represent him in the home. Amen? Be imitators of God and therefore as dearly loved children and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself us as an offering and a sacrifice to God. No wife, no child has ever said, oh, I was loved too much. I received too much joy, too much love in my life. I, I don't think women and children have ever said that. Amen? So you can overflow them with your love. Amen? Don't be the husband or the father who is reserved in expressing love. Or think that, oh, my wife will understand. My children, they understand that I love them. I don't need to say it. I'm the father. So they know. No. They don't know. We have to, as men, express our love to our wives, our children. And Christian love is much more than sex. Although sex is very important and a deep expression of love. But sharing in marriage is more than a bed and a body. Being in a marriage is not only looking how my wife looks like. A Christian man is to be loyal to his wife. As Jesus Christ stands with his church through every experience in life, so each man has to do the same with her wife. No matter what you are passing through, no matter if your wife has become, I don't know, you are still in the same boat together. You still need to stand with your wife together. Loyalty means having and showing a lifelong commitment 
to your partner. By marrying your bride and by opening yourself up to her, you close yourself off from every other woman. So men, I'm sorry, when you are married, you cannot look at any other woman again. And don't fall for the tricks of Satan. He knows that all of us, including women, we are very sensitive to attention. And that's why I'm telling you today how important it is that we express our love to our women and women that we express our love to our men. Because before you know, Satan can push somebody forward to say, go and give that person some attention. And you know what will happen? The man or the woman feels that he or she is getting more attention from this person than from the husband or the wife at home. So men, but also women, be exclusive for one another. Genesis 2, 22 to 23 says, Adam received Eve as a gift. Now Eve is the name that we know, but in Hebrew it is Zoe. And Zoe means life. So Adam did not only get a gift in the form of a, of a woman, but Adam also received life. He, that means that a man cannot do without a woman. Amen? And hence God has given you a gift. Are you going to change the gift? Huh? Adam, Adam was also was not so happy with his wife at the point where he said, yeah, but this is, it was you who gave her to me. And he didn't say it, but perhaps he thought, can I change her? Amen? But God gave Eve, Zoe, life as a gift to him. So then, there must be nobody else that accepts your wife. And that's why, you know, I want to tell you today, in our very busy lives, we have to spend time together as husband and wife, taking interest in the practical needs. You know, perhaps for a while you have been tired and, you know, you feel that your husband or your wife is not really seeing what is going on in your life. We need to be attentive to what is going on in the person that is one with you. Nourish, cherish your wife. Nourish, cherish your husband. And then don't forget to make compliments to your wives. Give her gifts. Give her constant affection. And please then, I think I will say from today, we should stop making the excuse that you were not brought up in that way. That you do not need, that you don't know how to say, I love you. I think we have passed that stage. Amen. And also the continent where you're coming from is not to blame. So I'm sorry, but from today on, you are going to practice practical love. Because that is what the Bible says. That's not what I say, but that's what the Bible says. And if you say that, oh, my father didn't do that, and my grandfather didn't do that, and that is not the way in our culture that you can say, oh, darling, I love you, forget about it. Read what the Word says. Amen. So never again, I want to hear that excuse that. I didn't know, and I don't know how to do it. Or we were taught that way. Or in my culture, it's not normal to say that. Forget about it. Read the words. It says we should cherish and love our wives 
we should shower them with love. Amen. Let there never be any doubt in your minds. For your children, you know, children are, they are looking at us, all of us, husband and wife. We are their examples. So whatever we are doing, whatever we are saying, remember that they see it. But most of all, they see how we behave towards each other. If my husband ignores me for five days, don't you think that these guys will know in the house? They will know. And they will think something is not normal. And if we as wives are always shouting as husbands to our husbands, our children at the point they will know that that is not normal. But the thing is, is that we are all like, you know, we copy things. So whatever our child is seeing, they will copy it from us. Amen. In our house, we love to watch football. So you can know that all the men in my house, they watch football. Willingly, unwillingly. It's not bad. <laughs> but whatever we do, and the things that we say, has an effect to our children. So the way we are treating each other, as husband and wife, is an example for your child to come in his own relationship later on with his wife or with his husband, her, with her husband. Amen. Number seven, husbands and fathers keep on learning. We have just started. We are not done. First Peter 3, 7, First Peter 3, 7 says, Husbands, in the same way be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Brethren, brothers, keep on learning. Jesus knows that you need it, and that you need more understanding, and that you need more wisdom. Women are very different from men. We do not respond the same way you respond. So the way you, your wife is, is not the same as you are. And she cannot look into your head what you are thinking or what you are assuming that she knows. So the same way goes to your children. Every child is different. And they do not come with a manual. I wish so that we could look up. What about this? Oh, chapter three. It doesn't work that way. So also with our children, we have to study our children. What is their desires? What do they like? What are their gifts? Your child does not need to become a copy of you. That was not what God intended for this person. Because every plan and every purpose that God has for somebody is unique. So when you are a medical doctor, your child does not necessarily need to be a medical doctor. God has created a plan for your child. And you need to follow what God wants this child to be. Not you. You have to ask God for guidance and for direction so that you will take the right steps to guide your children. Amen. Brethren number eight says, protect and be strong, men. Protect and be strong. You have the duty to protect your wife and your children. And they need your strength. That's why most our men are strong. They need your strength. You can go an extra mile. You need to be stronger than your wife. Because they need it. Amen? So you need to stand up and serve as a defender for them. Number nine, glory in weakness. 
Even as you seek to be strong, you must also glory in your own weakness. We know you are not a superhero then. We know that. And there are things that you are lacking. And you know, these are the things you can discuss with your wife. Then you find when certain things are not your area, <laughs> you can ask your wife for help. Amen? My husband is not in the area of finance. So he has handed over the finance to me. So now and then he will ask, How, what about the finance? How are we? He trusts me fully, whatever I spend the money on. Amen? But it's not his area. He has other qualities. That's why as husband and wife, you are a team. The man does not have to do everything. He can, can give certain responsibilities to the wife. Amen? But he has the right to know what is going on. Because it is still under his authority. But of course, I need to do the dish in our day. They cannot... Uh, Give all of these things away. Number 10, live with God's plan for your family. That is the last one, man, I want to tell you. Live with God's plan for your family. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, Whatever you are at work, or you rest, or you play, seek the glory of the Lord. Paul says, so whatever you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of the Lord. Brethren, fathers, husbands, live with your family a purpose-driven life. Live a purpose-driven life. Plan your life with your family. You know, I have met plenty of men in the past who had no idea how they, what, what, whatever they wanted to do in the future. We need to have a plan. And the man needs to seek the face of the Lord to find out what the plan is. So that he and the wife can pray about it all along. Of course we do not know what will happen in 10 years. But God is asking us that along the lines that he has set, the goals that he has set for our families, that we pray along with it, and step by step we see the direction God wants us to go. But be a husband, be a man, be a father of purpose. Plan for the future. What are you planning for your children? Perhaps some of you will think that, well, that is their life. When they leave the house and they get married, then it is their life. They can do whatever they want to do. Are you not providing certain things for them? So, plan for your life with your family. Brethren, I've said a lot of things today. And most of the things I have addressed to the men. But I want to say a few things to the women. And that is, what can we do to help our men? And for all those, you know, who are still searching, looking, praying, seeking for a husband, let me tell you that these are the tasks that, that you have to do when you have found your prince of the white horse. Oh no, it doesn't make this. Right, women, I want to tell you that first of all, our men need companionship. A Christian wife is their husband's friend. We are friends. Are we friends? No. <laughs> As a friend, we can fight so now and then. Is it? But he's still my friend. And when we are very good friends, I wouldn't say after one day, you know what, you're no longer my friend. Some of us, we have friends who we know from childhood. You can't tell me that all these years that you know them, that wasn't the day that you think, so tired of this person sometimes. 
And that's the same thing how it goes with husbands and wives. We are each other's friends, companions, partners in love. Amen. As Adam was so happy in the garden with his Eve, so we should be so happy to have a husband. So, companionship. Secondly, women, we should love our husbands unconditionally. A Christian wife should always love her husband. Because Paul tells us in Ephesians 5, 33, that we as wives should love our husbands and respect them. And that brings me to point number three. Respect your husband. Perhaps you are even smarter. Perhaps you have uh, more titles before your name or behind your name. I don't know. He's still your husband. He's your friend. And he deserves your respect. Don't think that because you have gone and perhaps you have experienced more things in life that you know the way better. Remember that we will go against the model that God has set for us. Number four, help your husband. Help him. Think with him. Advise him. If he is about to make a mistake, tell him that consider it once more. And never say, I told you so. It's a bad thing to say. It's very tempting, you know, but never say it. Instead, help him to understand. Amen. We see in the Bible many examples of wives giving good advice, but there are also plenty in the world who give very bad advice to their husbands. So don't belong to those ones who give poor counsel to their husbands. Number five, and that is the last point for our way today, devotion. A Christian wife should be completely devoted to her husband. And this includes faithfulness to her marriage, vows of caring for him and the children, helping him physically, emotionally, praying for him, and seeking good things for your husband. Let's you, as a wife, be the joy of your husband. Brethren, I want to close. Uh, I can go on, you know, but I will stop here today. And I would like to finish or stop with a prayer of blessing for our fathers. So for all of you who are at home, I would like you to stand, if you are there with your family, that you will Hold hands together and uh, speaking this blessing for the man. So I don't know for all those who are here in the church, if you want to hold the hand of your husband or if your family is complete, you know, you can, um, you can hold hands together. So I would like to invite my husband to the pulpit when I'm holding his hands and speaking this blessing upon his life. Dear Lord, bless every father and every grandfather with the best of your spiritual blessings today. Let him know that he is not alone in the task you have given him to provide for and support those under his care. Show him how much you delight in his work, Father, and affirm the value of whatever you have given him to do, both as a father as a husband and perhaps as a grandfather and as your child of yours. Confirm his worth daily so he has no reason to doubt whether he is loved in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray, create in him a deep sense of trust in you, knowing that he can count on you to help him lead and protect those depending on him. 
Father, let him know that every unselfish act of love and encouragement he has offered has been a gift that you receive gladly. Lord, show him how effective the prayers of a godly man really are and what a difference he has and can make to those around him, no matter how big or small the assignment is. When challenging times push him beyond his limits, Father, assure our husbands that you can take him further into the realm of possible impossibility. Speak deep into his spirit the powerful words he loves to hear from you, Father, that nothing can ever separate him from your love. Help him to grasp firmly the promises of your words, standing with faith, on the things you declare are true. Reward him, Father, for his faithfulness in the past, in the present, in the future, assuring him that true success and satisfaction don't lie in his accomplishments or in the things he does, but in the steadfastness, in the Christ-like character you are forming in him. Daddy, we are asking you to demonstrate to your sons your amazing grace and forgiveness as he seeks to love and know you with all his heart, soul, and mind. Release him from unwanted burdens of false guilt and bless him for his willingness to keep short accounts with you forgiving both himself and others. Help your sons to see his children or grandchildren through your eyes, realizing that in your hands is the safest place they can ever be. Strengthen your son's confidence in the only one who can bring root out of any situation. Father, I pray today that you teach your sons how to meet the needs of his children's life that are within his ability and help him to trust you for the rest. Push out any needless fear and grant him godly wisdom and spiritual guidance to lead and direct those precious children in your path. Complete any healing of past hurts or regrets that may interfere with parenting Build in your son a sense of joy, humility, and playfulness that draw his family close. When plans don't develop as he hopes or dreams are not yet realized, open his eyes to see beyond this world to a greater joy that never disappoints. And to a father who will never leave or abandon his son and his loved ones. Father, we pray that you will give your sons a passionate faith, a preserving spirit, and a powerful testimony that overcomes any weakness or doubt as you wear the armor of God daily. Today, on special days, and for all the days of his life, Father, fill your sons with the best of your blessings, so that one day he will stand before you and here you will say, praise, well done, my son, well done, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Praise the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord for that uh, wonderful uh, message, so simple to understand. And we ask that God will give us the grace to invite all we have plans today in the mighty name of Jesus. Announcement. Um, uh, we welcome you, those of you online. Again, once again, especially for today, a day 
God has well made, and we as men are rejoicing in Him. Amen. And we have all the blessings from the uh, mother, and we claim all those blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Our weekly activities hasn't changed yet. On Wednesdays, we have our uh, house fellowship. And on Fridays, our Friday meetings, Friday prayer services, and then on Sundays, our Sunday services. Um, like we announced last week, we will keep you updated uh, with when the church will be open again. But it's just by the corner. We are missing you all, and we know you have missed us a lot as well. Amen. So just prepare your mind to be here soon. Amen. Uh, those of you that have youths in your house, we see continue to encourage you to ask them to join the youth service from 9.30 to um, 10.45. Okay. 9.15. 9, 9.20. 10 o'clock. Amen. Um, in case you have your offerings, your tithes, feel free to send it to the accounts. And uh, I believe those of you that have been doing it, and God has been blessing you. But again, like we have always maintained in the church, when you give offering, you give tithes, you give it because you love God, because uh, it's one of the things God requires of us. And for God to continue to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, but before we go, I want to re-emphasize some points. Are there more please? Yeah, before we close. Um, men, we are servants, sacrificial ones. God has been giving us grace. God will continue to give us grace. And we need to be examples to our children. And then we need to be, that's the one that struck me most. As we, as individuals, we talk about you know uh, a purpose-driven life. It's not just for us individual, but also for our, our family. So when we are talking about our purpose of here on earth, we should also be thinking of our family. But the ones I want to emphasize on is the fact that she was saying, "Women, be Christian wives to your husband." That was so wonderful. I love your husband unconditionally. Be a devoted Christian wife to your husband. Let's pray. All right, on the 26th of June, we'll be having our National Holy Ghost Night in Amsterdam. Online, sorry. Sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm still uh, <laughs> far, far ahead. So it's going to be online. The National Holy Ghost Night is going to be online. And the link through which you can connect to this online uh, service, online program on the 26th of June will be communicated to you shortly. As you join, God will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's close. Our dear Lord and Savior, the Almighty One, the Creator of the Earth and Universe, we will honor you, we bless you for today. Day that you have made, the day that you have counted us among the living. Father, we return all glory back to you, for you are a merciful God. You have blessed us beyond measures, victory upon victories, battles upon battles that you won on our behalf. We appreciate you for this in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as we celebrate Father's Day today, we ask that all blessings shall be apportioned in the mighty name of Jesus, that will continue to run with you never give up because you have never given up on us in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us the grace as men to, to, to be good husbands to our wives and to our children, good fathers to our children. Father, we are asking anywhere we have failed in the past as men, that Father, you forgive us and give us the enablement to do things right this time around in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we want to thank you for our wives and for our children that you've given us Give us the um, wisdom to continue to uphold the family together in unison through the precious blood of Jesus. Father, as we go out this week, what 
whatever thing that we are going to be touching will turn good in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you open doors to us in the mighty name of Jesus. You continue to protect us, protect our wives, protect our children in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, this week shall be a week that will be full of blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Amen. Let's share the grace. The grace. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely His goodness and blessings shall follow us all the days of our life. And we shall dwell in his presence forever and ever. Amen. 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 Shalom. What we are going to do this year, uh, our women have cooked for you. So we are going to set the table. Uh, so we need your help to set the table. All of us are going to eat together in honor of the man. So this is not a sandwich. No bread, but food. And we're going to celebrate that you are great husbands and fathers. So let's uh, help uh, Levitt to set the tables and the chairs. Uh,